What's up guys, FSC Speed Shop. Today we're gonna talk about, obviously, my new to me 12V71 Detroit Diesel. Now this is a naturally aspirated version, in other words, it does not have a turbocharger. There is some controversy there because obviously being it's a two stroke, there are blowers involved. However, that does not mean it's not naturally aspirated. Because it has to use the blowers to scavenge its exhaust, it therefore is natural aspirated. If it had a turbo, it would be forced induction. We're not gonna really get into the whole thing of what or how a two-stroke diesel works. In fact, there's a lot of other much better than I can make videos on how these work. So I recommend you guys go ahead and check that out if you don't understand how these things work. Now, funny thing is with these engines is they're very well known for their sound. A lot of your older buses, like your old Greyhounds, your city buses used to run a lot of these. Nothing this large, but they would run them and they had a very unique sound to them. They almost sound like they're always over revving because they're two strokes and not four strokes. They sound like they're revving really fast. reality are spinning just as fast as any other diesel they just make more noise every time a piston comes to top dead center it fires so hence the noise so I'm not really getting get into the whole details with this but this specific engine what is it and why do I have it well this engine came out of a Terex I believe it'd be like a road grader or like a really large dump truck I'm not really sure of that I couldn't quite get a solid answer from the guy I bought it off of but either way, this engine is a standard rotation engine, meaning the engine turns counterclockwise. So if you are the engine, in other words, me facing this way, clockwise would be this way, counterclockwise is this direction, which is why when the engine twists, it tries to turn the block the other direction, hence why they always try to carry the left front wheel under a hard takeoff. If you ever watch them truck pulls, you'll see why the driver's side front wheel always comes up because the crank is trying to turn the block away from it. So counterclockwise is standard rotation for a truck, and that's what this engine is. Because these engines were like basically the original Lego set as far as engines go, they had all kind of variants. Everything from a 171, that's a one cylinder, 71 cubic inch per cylinder, all the way up to a 12V71, being a V12. Uh, the cool thing about a 12V is they run a pair of 671 that's in line six so it's a 671 not a 6v71 which they made those too so it's a pair of heads one each side obviously that would bolt directly onto a onto a 671 so you had your 171 271 uh there might have been a 371 i'm not sure on that um you had your 6v71 your 671s so you had a v6 l6 you had a 4, I'm pretty sure of. Then you had your 8V71. Then your 16V71 was simply a pair of V8s bolted together. And then you had your 12V71, which is this. And I imagine you could also bolt a pair of 12s together to make a 24. So, like I said, they were like Lego systems. It's kind of weird how it worked. Um, the blowers on here, I believe the way to set the blowers up, because you can see they're individual blowers, is I think these are basically two blowers that would go on a 6V71. Like I said, they're like the Lego systems. Now, what I wanna do is determine, and I'm gonna ask you guys here, what am I putting this in? Well, here's my thought process. The reason I bought this is because it was a rebuildable core. Now, other people have cornered the market in the will it start videos. I have no intention on doing that or boring you guys with it. Um, whether it runs or not now in its present condition is irrelevant to me. Well, when I did buy it, I put a, put a breaker bar on it. I turned it over, made sure it wasn't seized up or anything jamming it. Um, this supposedly has the larger injectors. I forget the number. Um, this is the N number, like N65, N70. I don't know, I forget, but supposedly it's got the bigger injectors in it. I'm not really over worried about that but I do intend on doing the full out of frame rebuild on this engine. So with that, I'm gonna start asking these questions of you guys. Number one, who would I contact 
that knows an awful lot about Detroit diesel, specifically these big truck engines. I am familiar with the uh, channel Bus Monkey Garage. I know he does a lot of Detroit. I don't know how to get a hold of him, but that might be a good place to go. If there's anybody in the area that professionally builds these engines, wants to maybe do a collab with me as far as doing a build on this engine, I might be interested in that as well. So any of you guys that know, or if any of you guys that are, Familiar, very familiar with these 1271 Detroits. Um, I might be very interested in talking with you. So go ahead and hit me up at festcheckshop at gmail.com. Information's right here as to how to get my email. Or you can DM me on FSC underscore speed underscore shop on Instagram. Either way works. So here's the way I see it. Gentry and Sons has been talking about putting one in a cab over. I, of course, have a cab over uh, my, my Orwell. I am not putting this in Orwell. Orwell has a new B model Caterpillar, the 3406B, that I rebuilt right here in the shop along with help of my son. And believe it or not, Jen. That was before I was doing videos with the truck, you know, the regular vlogs. So I do want to do this build, but I don't know what I want to put it in. Uh, James Pretty just bought one, and he's putting a... 12 v 92 which is a pair of v6 is put together apparently on the 92 series and uh oh who's the other one along with old along with old two stroke he just bought one in a peterbilt the 352 i believe it was a 1973. so now i'm not really so sure if i want to stick with cab over with this engine because everybody else is sticking one in a cab over do i put one in a conventional would I get the views with this engine in a conventional as I maybe would in a cab over? I'm not really sure. I don't own a truck that I can put this in yet. Um, so I'm kind of debating on what truck do I buy for the channel? What kind of truck would you guys prefer to see this in? Uh, Matthew brings up a point that maybe I'm better off with a conventional because I can show the engine off a lot easier than a cab over. Uh, Matthew was also suggesting a conventional with the standard flip up hood that we see the entire engine as opposed to let's say a butterfly hood like an old Kenworth or an old Peterbilt. So those are the questions I have. The other thing is I was considering because of the shape of these manifolds doing a twin turbo on this thing. There is a red cab over Peterbilt. I seen one video on Facebook. I cannot find them anywhere else and I can't find the video at all. Work. Supposedly that truck has a 12 V71 in it as well and it's twin turboed. Now I'm doing a little bit of real quick research on it and the blowers have to be a bypass blower apparently when you're running a turbocharger. That's what I'm seeing on some Facebook groups. Literally I just started doing that kind of research so I don't know. So I got to sit here and figure out what I want to do and how I want to do it. Another thing I noticed that Matt will pan around to the side here quickly for me. Because this did not come out of a truck, your accessory drive pulleys are in the front where typically they're in the back. Because usually you'll see like on your, uh, at least in your military trucks I noticed and um, other road trucks I noticed that your air compressor hooks onto the back of the truck for the air brakes along with the alternator will hook onto the back. So I don't know what belongs in the front, what belongs in the back for a truck configuration. Battle walk around this way. I'll show you the back side of the engine. Now, if I remember right, just from memory, here is where your air compressor would bolt onto, and I think somewhere on the back here would be another pulley to run your air compressor, your air conditioning compressor, sorry, along with an alternator. I'm not really sure. The other thing is the transmission bell housing, the, the accessory drive on the back, so to speak. Is this the proper one? It looks the same, I never measured it, and to be honest, I don't know what I'd be measuring if I did. Um, in other words, I don't know what, I didn't measure Orwell's transmission when I had it apart, so I don't know. I don't see any place on this flywheel for a, uh, a clutch to bolt on. I noticed this is on the inside here, but again, I don't really know. This didn't come out of a truck, this came out of a Terex, so I don't really know. Either way, I do know that we're going to have to use a lot of other parts to make this fit in a truck. Another thought I had is maybe I should buy an old truck like a junky one just for a donor for parts. 
something with a 6v71 or an 8v71 in it that's like just a dog uh basically just for parts just for your your uh accessories i'm assuming that the governor out of that out of i'm assuming that a governor out of an 8v or a 6v71 would also bolt onto this again going on that lego style configuration that that you would think that would work so these are thoughts I'm, I'm just spitting out right now by no means am i the authority on detroit diesel right now i have more questions than answers honestly so that's why i'm making this video because i'm asking you guys who should i talk to can you get them in touch with me um can you show them this video send them this video and says hey Festcheck wants to do a truck build with a 12v71 he might want to do some work with you guys on that so i don't know let me know what you think but my thought process is to make this engine go into a truck it shouldn't be too much work and with a couple more donor engines um i should be able to do that so also if you guys have an 8 an 8v71 or a 6v71 that came out of a truck i'm not looking to pay a lot of money for these things guys um i do know it is like a brand new rebuilt 6v71 which is like half the size of this so i'm not willing to pay that kind of money to only put a v6 when i want the big 12. um the idea also is for the work i do some stuff is heavy and i might actually want to build a heavy haul truck for the occasional heavy haul that we do with widmeyer um i probably won't use this engine a god off a lot or well would still be the primary puller but i think i would want to do a four axle tractor so that's the idea wanting a big engine yeah i know there's more powerful engines out here than this antique but that's the idea so if you guys know anybody that can help me out send them my way or if you personally could do it send them my way so here's what i'm looking for do i go cab over or do i go conventional um i don't think i want to go freightliner i still think i'm looking for peterbilt or kenworth maybe the right mac if there's enough room under the hood i don't know did I ever make an extended hood super liner I don't know and what would you guys watch not only what would you guys watch but also what do you think would get more views in the trucking community out here um again with uh with gentry uh james pretty and old two stroker i don't think i want to go cab over because i i'd be number four in line i think i want to go a different direction i'm not really sure i certainly don't want to be copying their ideas i'm not really copying an idea it's just just seems like everybody's going the two-stroke direction for the noise and uh i want to be original which is typical of me so let me know what you guys think in the comments below you'll be seeing this engine a lot more coming up i do intend on like i said uh, it will be a full-on rebuild i'm not just going to slam it in a truck and call it good so this is puzzle piece number one of a much larger job and also with us potentially moving into a newer, bigger shop, we should be in good shape. So with that, I'm gonna let you guys go. Matt over here is holding a camera since I broke my tripod by accident, the wind blew it off, and uh, or wind blew it over and broke it, and Matthew's back teeth are floating because he's crying, he's gotta pee. So with that, guys, let me know what you think. So with that, guys, let me know what you think. Leave comments below. Thank you very much for watching.